Are you concerned about all the market volatility? Well, before you go into a panic, let's look at some charts of copper and see what that may be telling us about the economy. Copper is an excellent market and economic indicator that can give you a good idea about the health of the economy. Let's look at this chart that goes back some 15 years. You can see how copper peaked out during the housing boom of the early 2000s and then how the price ultimately crashed almost 70% as we went into the Great Recession. But in 2009, as the economy started to recover, so did the price of copper. In fact, because of all the quantitative easing and the money printing and the fear of inflation, the price of copper went on to make all-time record highs. But then as we got past 2011, and inflation ended up not rearing its ugly head, the market adjusted and the price of copper dropped precipitously. Despite the infusion of trillions of dollars of quantitative easing, the recovery was weak and inflation was modest. And the price of copper came down nearly 60% from its 2011 highs. But then at the end of 2016, an unforeseen event occurred when Donald Trump got elected as president. That escalated the price of copper in what became known as the Trump recovery. But then not surprisingly, in the second year of his administration, some of the bloom had come off the rose and it looked like the Trump recovery was petering out and the price of copper once again fell. But look at the uptick in that chart. It looks like perhaps copper has put in a bottom. And the reason that's important is because it might mean that a new baseline has been reset for the price of copper over the past decade and that could be foreshadowing what might be likely to occur in the economy going forward. Let's expand our chart out and take it back two generations to 1960. Now there's a lot of volatility in the price of copper as you would assume would be occurring with the ups and downs of the economy over the years. But notice that period from about 1963 up to 1998. Overall that was a fairly stable price period for copper. There were some notable peaks to the price of copper like the OPEC oil embargo of the early 1970s and the malaise of stagflation in the late 1970s. But for the most part, that 35-year period exhibited an extremely tight range, and that's characteristic of the nature of copper. You see, the real anomaly here is the extreme amount of volatility that's happened with copper since about 1990. Now, I could fill this chart up with footnotes that highlighted the significant historical events that took place over this period from the collapse of the Soviet Union, to the rise of the Internet, and the admittance of China into the World Trade Organization. And while all those were immensely significant events, the one undisputed world-altering event that did take place during that period was the tragic attacks of September 11, 2001. That event led to unprecedented government deficits combined with Federal Reserve balance sheet expansion and suppression of interest rates that has gone on to characterize the last 17 years, and the impacts have been felt not only in the United States, but globally. So the question is, where will the baseline for the price of copper be reset for the post-9-11 21st century? Well, it looks like it may be around $2.50, and let me tell you why that's important. Let's look at the price of copper since Trump's election. The trading range for the price of copper has narrowed. From peak to trough, the variation is only about 34%, and that low volatility, narrow trading range is about one of the lowest we've seen for the price of copper in the last 20 years. Now let's take that same chart of copper and superimpose on top of it the performance of the emerging markets over the last couple years. The correlation is quite consistent, and that's, again, one reason why I constantly look at the price of copper as a market and economic indicator. If, in fact, we've recently reached a bottom in the price of copper, and if that establishes a new long-term baseline for the price of copper, then that trend may also correlate to a bottom in the emerging markets. To see the implication of that, let's step back and look at a 15-year chart of the emerging markets. Although there's been extreme volatility, the overall long-term trend is still intact. The performance that we saw at the beginning of the year broke through the previous highs that occurred prior to the Great Recession, and I believe the markets are setting up for another long-term run. The fear of tariff and trade wars have temporarily pulled this market back, but I think this is just a short-term setback. The emerging markets are populated by over 6 billion people, and to me, that's where the long-term trend is. I remain fully invested in these markets, and I expect them to go on to make all-time new highs. 
Well, hey, that's just my opinion. Am I right or wrong? You'll have to come back for future episodes of the Well Studying Podcast. Until then, as always, this is John Pagliano wishing you the very best returns.